Hey guys, in this video today, I'm going to show you what to do if you lose your job so that that situation will actually work for you, will actually work to your advantage instead of something that you have to be worried about. Now, in case you don't know who I am, my name is Chris Shoup, and I created this channel to help people to be free. So if you'd like to have more freedom in your life, then you're in the right place. Okay, I know this is on a lot of people's minds. A lot of people are affected right now. A lot of people are losing their jobs because of this area. All the businesses are shutting down and going on lockdown and whatnot. So a lot of people have lost their jobs. So I wanted to address that specifically now because it, it, losing your job doesn't have to be a bad thing. In fact, it could be a really good thing in the grand scheme of your life. And so that's what I'm going to attempt to show you here using my PGPST method. I created a method and made an acronym and gave it a name because it sounds so much more official that way. And so that's what I'm going to show you in this video. Now, I lost my job. The last job that I had was, was about two years ago, and I got fired from that job. Or, well, they told me I got laid off, but really they, they laid me off because I, I did a pretty crappy job and they were just too polite to say so. I don't really like being an employee, so I haven't really done the best job as an employee. I much prefer to work for myself. But anyway, what I'm going to show you here is exactly what I did when I lost my last job that has worked out very well for me. I've done very well for myself since that. Now, the PGPST acronym uh, is short for Perspective, Goals, Path, Skills, and Time. These are the five kind of stages that you're going to go through in your planning once you lose your job. Okay, now let's go through these one by one. When I say perspective, I mean put the situation in perspective. Get a realistic view of your, of your actual situation, of your actual circumstances. Chances are a lot of people, when they, they face a situation such as losing their job, they tend to catastrophize. They just imagine the worst case possible scenario. They imagine themselves uh, laying in a gutter somewhere, homeless, and getting eaten by rats or something. And they, you know, they're completely freaked out. And when you're in that state of fear, when you're in that state of anxiety, it's very difficult to do anything productive, and it's very difficult to use this situation to get to a better place in life, which is what I'm going to recommend that you do. So first thing to do is just get realistic about the downside. What is the worst? Honestly, what is the worst that could happen? I mean, you have to take unemployment. Maybe you have to get another job. Maybe you have to move in with your parents, right? It's very, very unlikely, uh, unless you're a, you're a drunk or a drug addict, that you're going to end up homeless. It's very unlikely that anything really bad is going to happen to you. So just think about, in, in a reasonable way, What's the worst that can happen? And the, if you meditate, by the way, I know I sound like a broken record because I say this in like every video, but if you meditate regularly, it gives you that ability to do that, that you kind of have that emotional distance from yourself uh, so that you can, you can analyze your situation rationally, kind of like you would if your friend lost his job. If somebody else lost their job, then you'd, you'd probably be far more rational about it because it's not, it's not quite so, uh, so close to you, right? So if you can learn to get that kind of distance, which is something you get through meditation, then it's a lot easier to put this in perspective. And then you can kind of figure out, okay, what's, what's really, really the worst that can happen here? So once you get that out of your system, you probably, uh, you're feeling a little bit better because you realize that the worst case scenario is really nowhere near as bad as you thought it was, right? There's, there's really not much risk to your life or to your health. You're not gonna end up on the, on the streets homeless and, and getting eaten by rats. The next thing, and this is very helpful if you can make yourself do it, is to have the faith that everything that happens to you in your life happens for your own good. You know, I talk about all the time how faith is the key to success. If you have faith in a positive future, if you have faith in a reality that rewards goodness, uh, then you don't really have to be worried about anything. You can just trust the process. You can do good things. You can make good use of your time. You can be productive, and you can have that faith that it's all gonna work out for you in the end. So if you have that faith, then you'll recognize that the fact that you lost your job is actually a blessing. And that very probably, the fact that you lost your job is freeing you up for something else. Whenever you lose something, 
It's, it's creating space. It's creating space in your life. It's giving you more time than you can de- that you can dedicate to something that is probably more important to you, that's probably better aligned with you fulfilling your goals. So take advantage of that extra time that you have now and see that job loss as an opportunity and not as some sort of death sentence. So that's the first step, is put it into perspective. And then the second step is is goals. You want to get really clear on what your long-term goals are. Now, I know for a lot of people this is kind of uncomfortable. Most people don't really have any long-term goals. Most people are just kind of playing it day by day, and they're, they're kind of wandering aimlessly through life, and they don't really know where they're going. Uh, and so I would highly recommend that you at least get an idea of what's going to make you happy. You know, if, if you don't have a, a religion that tells you that this is the ultimate purpose of life, um, then, then sure, that's okay. You know, work with what you've got, but at least have something in mind that's going to at least leave you in a better place than you are now. So just think about times in your life when you felt happy, times in your life when you felt fulfilled. Just go, go inside a little bit and figure out what it is that you value, what it is, what, what your life would look like Uh, if you were perfectly happy, or or rather what kind of life would make you as happy as possible, what kind of life would make you as fulfilled as possible. Get really clear on what those values are. And chances are you have a bunch of them. You have a bunch of things that are important to you, and what's important to you might not be important to somebody else, right? Like somebody, one person might want to make a ton of money and be a billionaire, and somebody else might just want to make enough money to get by and not have to work very much and go fishing all day. You know, different people have different objectives, so just be really clear and really honest with yourself about what it is that you ultimately want, that would ultimately make you happy. And then once you figure that out, come up with a career path that checks all the boxes. And don't worry about qualification right now. Don't worry if you're qualified. Don't worry about how accessible it is. Think about what is it that you could do that would give you everything that you want. So if you want to make $100,000 a year at least, and you want to have at least, you want to work part-time, and you want to be able to travel, for example, come up with a list of careers that would let you do that, right? You could be a digital marketer, right? You You could be an author, you could be a YouTuber. Once you get to a big enough point, you can do that. And chances are you have a lot more criteria than that too, right? Like probably, uh, maybe you like writing, but you don't like making videos, right? So the author idea would be a whole lot better than the YouTuber idea. So just take some time to think about this and figure out what, what is the ultimate perfect career for you, given you, you know, you've had a lot of life experience. You've had time to figure out what you like and what you don't like, right? What, would, what could you do that would get you all of the things that you like and none of the things that you don't like? So that's number two, that's the goal. Once you're clear on what your goal is, um, then go on to number three, which is path. And by the way, I I kind of talk about this in more detail. I give you a a exercise that you can go through to do um, steps two and three here in this video, all about finding what is the proper business for you. Like what's the best business type for you? And it doesn't have to be a business, by the way. It could be that you want to be an artist, or it could be that you you just want a job. You know, you want to find the perfect job for you. That's okay, this is going to help you get clear on it either way. So number three is the path. Basically you're asking yourself what can you do now or in the near future that's going to get you a step closer to these goals, right? If you have to get a job, let's say, or maybe you start a freelance business, uh, what is it that's going to pay your bills now that can get you one step closer to your goals? And you want to think about this in terms of time, money, flexibility, and skill development. So when I say in terms of time, uh, if it, what, what can you do that's gonna give you enough time left over to pursue the thing that you actually wanna do, right? So if you have to work at a job that's not what you ultimately wanna be doing, for example, you wanna try to find a job that doesn't, doesn't demand a whole lot of your time so that you have time left over. So for example, I talk about remote jobs a lot. Remote jobs are great because you have a lot of time. You have a lot more time uh, t- that you can use the way that you want to if you have a remote job than if you have a regular job. Think about it in terms of money. You want something that's going to be able to pay your bills. If you want to start a business, chances are that business is going to require some investment. You're going to have to put some money into that business. So think about what's going to pay your bills 
plus the amount of money that you have to invest in your business. Think in terms of flexibility. What job or what method of sustaining yourself is going to give you the flexibility that you need in order to be able to pursue your ultimate goals. So, uh, for example, if, if your goal is to be a, a travel blogger, let's say, well, then you have to travel. In, in order to be able to travel very much, you probably need a job that you can work remote, that you can have a lot of flexibility. There I go with the remote jobs again, but you know, think in terms of, of what's gonna give you the flexibility that you need. And then lastly, and this is maybe the most important one, is to think in terms of skill development. So let's say that you want to uh, start a marketing business. Well, it makes a whole lot more sense to find a job doing marketing than it does to do a job doing IT, let's say. Because you want to develop the skills that are ultimately going to get you to your goal. Right, so if you can actually develop those skills on the job and you're getting paid for it, so it's paying your bills and it's developing your skills, then that's, that's a really good fit for getting you closer to, to your goals. So that's the path part of this. And again, if you want an exercise that you can kind of just follow step by step that's going to walk you through this, again, check out that video I did earlier about how to find the perfect business for you. Next step is skills. You want to learn new skills. Probably. I mean, you might have all the skills already, but if there is some, uh, some gap between where you are now and where you have identified in this goals section in terms of skills, then you want to learn those skills. So if you want to be an author, for example, then you probably have to learn how to write. I mean, maybe you, ha you know how to write already. If you already know how to write well enough, then maybe you have to learn how to publish a book, and then maybe you have to learn how to market a book, et cetera, et cetera. There are probably a bunch of skills that you need to learn in order to get to your goals. And then also, if your path requires some skills that you don't have already. So let's say that you've decided that your path is to get a job in marketing, but you don't already know how to do marketing very well, right? Because you, you decided that marketing will help you get to your goal, so you chose that as a path, but you don't, you don't really know marketing very well. Well, learn it, right? Th that's what the skills section is about. So you want to figure out what skills you need in order to reach your goals and you know, if there's a gap between where you are now and what you want to do next as your path, then you want to fill in those skills as well. So there are a whole bunch of resources available online where you can learn to fill in those skills. So for example, uh, when, when I lost my job, I decided that I wanted to learn marketing, which I highly recommend because marketing is just so applicable to everything, like anything that you want to do. Like everything that I've talked about, if you want to be an artist, you want to be a musician, you want to be an author, you want to own a business, uh, just about everything included there relies on marketing to some extent, right? You have to market your music, you have to market your books, you have to market your business, whatever it is, you, you always need to learn marketing just about. So that's, that's one that's almost universal. And there's a whole lot of money in marketing if you get good at it. So that's what I chose. And I went with a, a particular marketing course I found called the ClickFunnels One Funnel Away Challenge. It's a really, really detailed, like comprehensive, in-depth course that I would highly recommend. So, you know, if that's something that you want to pursue, if you want to do marketing, I'll put a link in the description below where you can sign up for that. But anyway, what you need to do here is you need to figure out what skills you need to get you to your goals. You need to find resources to learn those skills. And then I would recommend that you create a schedule to learn those skills. So say, okay, I'm going to take this one funnel away challenge for the next 30 days. And then after that, I want to take a course in writing. And then after that, I want to take a course in publishing or, you know, whatever it is or you could take them, take them at the same time, right? You have all this time because you don't have a job, so take advantage of it. Use it to, to build your skill set. That's something that's gonna be with you forever. So that's step number four, the skills. And then the final step is time. You are going to buy as much time as you possibly can. Now, hopefully you have some savings, and if you're watching this video and you haven't lost your job, but you're anticipating it, uh, then, then save up as much as you can, right? Because it's gonna make this so much easier. But regardless of whether or not you have savings, there, there are things that you can do to buy yourself more time. So you have more time that you can, you can spend full time learning these skills and figuring out you know, what you wanna do with your life if you don't know already. So you wanna do everything you can to 
extend this situation, to extend uh, this circumstance where you have all this time. So one thing you can do is take unemployment. And, you know, I, probably a lot of you guys watching this are saying, oh, I don't want to take money from the government. I don't want to be a, a welfare bum. And, you know, I, I used to feel that way. But at this point, I, I kind of feel like the government's already taking so much of your money that if you can get a little bit of it back, then why not do it? Right? You're only taking a tiny fraction of the money that they have taken from you. So I would recommend going on unemployment if you can. Uh, you could live with your family, right? If you're, if you're renting an expensive place or you're uh, paying an expensive mortgage, you could rent it out to somebody else and then move back in with your family or live with a roommate or just move to a cheaper place, right? The, the less money that you're spending, the, the longer you can go before you have to have a job, before you're, you're forced to go back to work. Then, of course, you can live on whatever savings you have. So if you've been saving, hopefully you've been saving, then you have some money to live off of. And including retirement savings. If you have a 401k, then um, you can take money out of that. And if it's a normal 401k, you know, you have to pay a penalty for that. But it might be worth it, right? If you have to pay a 20% penalty, but it actually gets you to your goals in life, then is it worth paying 20% on whatever you have to take out? Probably it is. I mean, I, I did this actually when I lost my job and I had put all of my money into a Roth 401k, which means it's, it's already taxed. So there's no penalty for taking it out early, which was nice. And, and by the way, anybody who's not in the US who's listening to this, you probably don't understand a word of what I just said, but this is, uh, these are US retirement accounts, like US government retirement accounts where you, they're tax deferred. So don't worry about that. Another thing you can do is reduce your living expenses. Um, cook at home more, don't, don't eat out as much, buy cheaper food, uh, buy, buy cheaper stuff, you know, don't buy stuff that you don't need. The, the more you can reduce your living expenses, the more time you can buy uh, to get to a point where money is no longer an issue, you know, if that's something that's important to you. So you're making a little bit of a sacrifice today for a better tomorrow. And I'm not talking about like those investment gurus that say that you should scrimp and save for, for 40 years so that you can be rich when you retire. That's not what I'm talking about at all. I'm saying save a little bit so that you can buy more time where you can invest that time into your business or in, into your artistic endeavors or whatever it is that you're trying to do. That way you're much more likely to succeed because your time really is your most valuable asset. So if you can buy your time, then do it. And then if you have to, you can work part time. Right? You, can, you can drive for Uber or something. Do, do something that gives you a little bit of flexibility where you can, you can um, make ends meet. You can make a minimal amount of money that's going to pay your bills, but you still have the majority of your time left over that you can focus on doing what you actually want to do. So those are all five steps in this oh-so-official PGPST method for uh, how to get back on your feet after you've lost your job. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please hit the thumbs up. It makes YouTube like me better. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell icon beside the subscribe button so you get all my future videos. If you're interested in coaching, I do do coaching. Um, it's, it's not cheap. You know, I'll warn you in advance. But if you're interested in coaching, then send me an email at chris at dominatethemarketplace.net and we can talk about that. If you found this video helpful, I'd appreciate it if you leave me a comment. If it could be helpful for somebody else that you know, then share this video. And another video you might like is an old one I did that you can see here, all about how to make money when you're broke. So if you have no money to invest, then what's a way that you can start a business even if you have no money now?